because I got a call from Craig last night, and he asked me to bring the message this morning, and I'm going, Lord, what do I do? I got a lot of things to choose from, but I wasn't sure what to do. And as I'm looking through the songs this morning, I'm going, that's it. I'm going to talk about freedom. So what I want you to do is just think about these words that you're singing. And then when we read over the word, we'll see what we are, if our thoughts are correct. We will walk in your freedom. Because we will walk in your freedom, walk in coming down the hill, and he had to cross Highway 101, cars were going like this, and I thought, don't come over here, but he was determined to cross the road because he wanted a drink, <laughs> and he 
came across, came down to the river, took a drink, went across, avoiding all the traffic, went up the hill again, all for a drink. And I thought about this song that way back then, and I always just pictured that deer. So may we be just as desperate to just drink from the water of life, just like that deer. is devoted like a ring of solid gold like a vow that is tested like a covenant of old and your love is enduring through the winter rain beyond the horizon with mercy for today faithful you have been and faithful you will be you pledge yourself to me and 
and it's why I sing your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips. Be on my lips. Oh. You father the orphan makes us whole and you shoulder our weakness and your strength becomes our own now you're making me like you clothing me in white bringing beauty from ashes for you will have your bride free of all the guilt and rid of all her shame and know her tr true and it's why I sing your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, you will be praised. saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you lord you will be praised you will be praised with angels and saints we sing worthy are you and that's why I sing your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips, your praise will never be on my lips, never be on my lips. mercy never fails me all my days I've been held in your hand yes from the moment that I wake up till I lay my head I will sing yes Lord all the goodness of God let's sing that again Yeah. 
take this moment to just speak out some of the goodness of God that you've experienced this week. Mm. This is a great opportunity for that. You're faithful. Mm. I know that I'd like to just testify that I see God working in my family and mm -hmm. It's always encouraging to see, um, no matter what life throws our way, we we start to realize that God needs to be a big part of this equation, and I'm just thankful that um, there's never, never a time that we don't look to God, no matter what situation we're in, and I've just seen that happen throughout this week several times, and I just want to... I'm just so thankful that God is in our in our lives and and drawing us to him. Mm. Thank you, Jesus. Mm. Thank you for letting us be in that spirit of presence for the last mm. three years of my life. Yes. Yes, Lord. Open our eyes, Lord, let us see all that is you are. All that you mean. Open our ears, Lord, let us hear all that you are. Be loud and clear. Please be near as our prayer.
temptation We're crying out in desperation for you you Lord Father we just we just thank you and praise you that we have an opportunity to come and gather in your name sing praises to you Father we pray that this would be a a good sacrifice to you Lord of praise we ask Lord that you turn our hearts towards you more and more every day I ask that you would just bless uh, George's message today as you speak through him Pray that we would find scripture to apply to our lives. We pray for your standard to be raised up in that. Thank you, Father, for this time. Pray you bless it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Let's take up an opportunity if we can, and before you sit down, go hug someone. <laughs> hug, pray for someone. Somebody needs some prayer to say, please say a blessing over me. So how many people really enjoyed that extra pump on the coffee pots? Wasn't that cool? <laughs> yeah. Well, we have a little bird in here that gave that suggestion that we just need a, a, some more coffee. <laughs> of course, it's keeping people out in the foyer a little longer these days. I sure love the Lord. The Lord is good. He is. And all the time we know that he is good. I look at Ron's face as he comes in, and it's like, you look great. And he goes, I do? <laughs> and I said, well, considering the things that you've gone through, it's like, you look really good. And I would say that that's the grace of God that's just working in his life. It's, it's pretty cool. So, like I told you earlier, uh, last night, Craig called me and just said, I need you to really help if you can. And so I, I was going to continue through the book of Matthew in the, in the Passion Week, because that's where we're at. But I, I thought differently. And I was, as I was looking at the song that we started out with, Freedom, it's like, I think this is where we'll go today. So that's what we're going to talk about, finding true freedom. 
And that's why I had you singing. What do I mean when I'm singing? We will walk in your freedom. We will walk in, walk in your liberty. So it says in 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Lord is spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty or freedom. Liberty or freedom. I would say that freedom, liberty has got a, an idea that uh, can be very different than, li than freedom, but we'll talk about that. Church on the Hill has a, a banner that says, Know God, find freedom, discover purpose, and play a role. Great ideas. Harvest Church has a class called Finding Freedom, or the Freedom Class. Freedom is a big deal. And it sounds good, and what is it that grabs our attention when we, when we talk about freedom? Because when we talk about it, it just gets our attention. And I would propose to you that we as humans who are made in the image of God, we are hardwired to pursue this thing called freedom. It's in our very nature. Our founding fathers of this country knew this. And that is why they wrote in the Declaration of Independence, we, we hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, and they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, to some, freedom means that there are no restraints, nothing holding them back. And this is called licentiousness the freedom to do as one pleases. That's not what this is talking about. But some people like that idea. No holds bar. I can do what I want to do. To others who are more in touch with reality, true free to freedom is living as we should, not as we please. We need to be free to do what we should do. Our pursuit of freedom is misunderstood in a lot of ways. Some say it is because we are people of the West and who can really appreciate freedom because we were born into a land of free people. And that's why we really pursue freedom so much. Now, with that said, because of that, that we're born in the West, should I have the attitude of Patrick Henry when he said these famous words on March 23rd, 1775? Give me liberty or give me death. Is that how much we should pursue freedom? And I'm not sure that's the kind of freedom... And it shouldn't be at our highest pursuit is freedom, that type of freedom. We're told to pursue what in, in the Bible? Pursue righteousness and the kingdom of heaven. That's what our pursuit should be. And there have been many of our Christian ancestors who were anything but free and advanced the, ki the kingdom of God uh, possibly greater in measure than we have done so far in, in this free country. They weren't free, and the kingdom of God just moved through the ages. And I don't want you to misunderstand, I like living in this country a lot. I haven't known anything else, but I hear things from my ancestors who were in Mexico. And so they tell me stories. <laughs> it wasn't like we experience here. Uh, I appreciate the sacrifices that many have given for the cause of freedom. Mike is one of them. I, I would love for my grandkids, once I get some, <laughs> to enjoy the freedom that I've experienced. And I'm I'm doing whatever I can to maintain our freedom as well. But I think the freedom that the Bible speaks of is of a different nature. And that's what we're going to talk about. Now, I may be stating the obvious here, but I don't think so. I think that uh, I think you might hear something quite a bit different with freedom. It says in 1 Peter 2.18, servants. No, it's, he starts out by servants. What does that mean? That person he's talking to is not free. It's a slave. Servants, be submissive to your masters with all fear, not only to do good and, and gentle, but also to the harsh. So there are some real good masters that take care of them, but there's also some harsh ones. And what does he say to the servant? Be submissive. So what is this freedom talking about? Free from what? We walk in your freedom, we walk in your liberty. Free from what? Free from tyranny? I don't think so. Because remember, Matthew 5, 10, it says, Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revile and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my, my name's sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven, for they have persecuted the prophets who were before you. I just want to say we have never experienced persecution as a people in this country. Don't even have a clue what it's like. 
It may come our way. And so we need to embrace these things. Maybe free from suffering? Is that what he's talking about? Yeah, I don't think that's so either because Philippians 3.10 says, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. <laughs> Romans 8.16, the Spirit himself bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ, if indeed we suffer with him, that we may also be glorified together. So it's not free from suffering. That's not what we sing about, walk in his freedom. How about free from temptation? Oh. 1 Corinthians 10, 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as common to man. What that's saying right off the heels there is the thing that you're experiencing, the temptation you're experiencing, others have done so. You're not exclusive. You're not alone. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Temptations come our way. God allows the temptations to come our way. The difference between a test and a temptation, same word, test and temptation. God provides the test, the devil brings the temptation. God allows the devil to bring the temptations, to test us, to see if we will take the way of escape that he offers. And all too often when that way of escape comes and we see it, we don't take it. I'm just confessing, that's me too. We need to take the way of escape. And he won't let us bear more than that if we will grab hold of that door and go through that way of escape. Remember that Jesus was led into the wilderness by the Spirit to do what? To experience temptation. And Jesus reveals a mystery here. It says in John 8, 31, Then Jesus said to the Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And they answered him and said, We are Abraham's descendants. We have never been in bondage to anyone. I can't even believe they would say something like that. They must have forgotten their history. How can you say we will be made free? Jesus answered them, Most assuredly, I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. And a slave does, does not abide in a house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the Son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. So the freedom is being freed from the, the slave master of sin. Now, the big question is, what is sin? It's not necessarily always doing what's wrong. That's the first place we go. We sin, and, oh, I did something wrong. It literally means missing the mark. You've heard that. The archer pulls up, oh, I sinned because I didn't hit the bullseye. That's what it is. We want to do what's right, but we struggle achieving the goal. And that's, there's no surprise with that. This was Jesus' mission, to help us meet that goal and hit that mark. Matthew 1, 21. And she shall bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Yeshua, Jesus. For he will save his people from them missing the mark, their sins. This is why Jesus was born, to set humanity free. Free from the penalty of sin, we know that as justification. We're justified because of the work that Jesus did. The penalty of sin. But also we're free from the power of sin and its control. That's called sanctification. We're in that process right now. Day by day as we look in the mirror, we are being transformed into his image. Sanctified. And eventually free from the very presence of sin. And that's the eradication of sin. I really look forward to that day. We're not there yet, but that's a day that's coming when there will be no more temptation and no more sin. We will always hit the mark. Our prison doors opened in order to experience this type of freedom we're talking about. We started out with the 2 Corinthians 3.17, but look at the next verses as we talk through this. 2 Corinthians 3.17, Now the Spirit of the Lord is... And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom, liberty. But we all, with unveiled face, beholding as in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are being transformed into that same image from glory to glory, just as by the Spirit of the Lord. 
Now, this verse gives the meaning to the freedom that we are seeking right here. Look at the illustration in the mirror. It says in 1 Corinthians 3.12, For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, but then I shall, uh, shall know just as I am also known. So I, uh, I, I learned a long time ago, I should have probably knew this, but they didn't have mirrors like we do now. We got these great mirrors that give us a perfect image of who we are. They didn't have that back then. The best they could do was a finely polished brass that you looked into it and you couldn't quite see what it looked like. That might be good for some of us, you know, so we don't spend so much time in looking in the mirror. But uh, that's what they had. And that's why Paul says, for I, now we see in a mirror dimly, but then one day face to face like one of our mirrors, we will see it. And now I know in part, but then I shall be known just as I am also known. John 8, 31, then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and you shall, then the truth shall make you free. Let's look at the word transform. We talked about this several weeks ago, but it's, it's a good one. It's the word metamorpho, and this is the freedom we're looking for. Metamorpho is, means to, uh, we get the word metamorphosis. And I think of tadpoles and frogs. I think of caterpillars and the butterflies. Those are things that we saw as kids, and they were so cool. But then we get older, and we forget how cool those things really are. I mean, just think about that. A caterpillar goes into his little cocoon. All the same DNA that was in the caterpillar is still in that, in that cocoon with him, but it's kind of remixed, recoded. And it comes out as this butterfly. That word is what he's talking about. We will be transformed. We will be metamorphosized. Where our DNA will be reconfigured and we will be different. Matthew 17, 2. It says this. And he was transfigured before them. And his face shone like the sun. Oh, but yeah, let me back up a little bit here. These are the four places where the, uh, that word transformed is used. The one in, Matthew, in uh, 1 Corinthians 3.18. And then we got one where Jesus was transformed on the, on the Mount of Olives, uh, where he was transfigured. And it says, and he was transfigured before them. His face shone like the sun, and his clothes became white as the, as the light. And again in Mark 9.2. Now after six days, Jesus took Peter, James, and John and led them to a high mountain. Uh, part by